Well, this looks like a challenge right here. <laughs> Old terminal. Uh, it's, it's a scary thing for many Windows and, and Mac users and some Linux people and it's Linux content creators are like, hey, you don't need to use terminal in Linux. And to that, I say hogwash. You absolutely have to use it. And uh, before we jump into it and I right, start showing you how it kind of falls flat when you don't use terminal, I want to just say that maybe in the future, this will be kind of a thing, but not right now. And also there are some highlights to this, but all of Linux and all its development is all done from basically server. And, and every Linux install, all Linux development is from servers. Uh, so headless machines that sit in a data center, that's where Linux's most of its adoption comes from. That's where all the development comes from. Everyone in the Linux Foundation, everybody that is putting money into Linux is all in the server realm. So that's why Terminal is so good in Linux and why it's so much better. Like its CLI interface is better than Windows, Mac, anything else on the market because of this fact. So I just want to kind of lay this out first, but I don't want to be overly negative. Let's first start with uh, some of the benefits of the GUI tools and how far they've come. So I'm using Bashtop here. Htop's another one that's a, a terminal-based process explorer or, you know, kind of see what's happening with your system. I like Bashtop. It's probably the prettiest out of all of them. Uh, but probably a good counterpart, and I've done a video on, is something called Stacer. And Stacer, you can clean up your system. You can kind of go through and, and clean up temp files here. You have your services. You can see your processes. There's so much going on, and this is actually pretty darn good. So if you do want to go ahead and kill something, you can go here and just hit in process very much like you do in Windows. So this is uh, something that's come a long ways, and everybody, every... Every distro has its own built-in process explorer. And, uh, you know, for this is Stacer. That's a third-party tool. But uh, I know KDE has its own uh, process explorer to look at this. So these, you know, there's probably 10 different ones, and they all are pretty decent uh, compared to your terminal counterpart. But up next, we have, hey, disk usage. That's another one uh, that's actually done pretty well. And these are just kind of system utilities that, probably most users don't even care about or use, but I wanted to show them because I was kind of impressed with the Linux GUI counterparts that were developed by teams. And you can kind of say, hey, okay, where is all my storage happening in my home folder? I'm using NCDU or no curses disk usage is what that stands for. You go into local, share, steam. Oh man, what, what is in here? Ah, Elden Ring's taking up 50 gigs in my home folder. So I know if I need space, I could move that to a secondary drive and clear up 50 gigs of space right there. And if we look at the GUI counterpart, we just have Disk Usage Analyzer that comes with pretty much every Fedora instance. And you can kind of drill down between all these and kind of see what's happening. And you got a nice little pie chart. If you're on Windows, you might use mm, probably WinDIR Stat, or there's a lot of different tools for Windows, but uh, still very comparable so far between the terminal and uh, the actual GUI to where it's not not so bad. So where does this fail? And I would say general system usage. And you might be like, well, what the hell you mean by that? <laughs> Let me explain. Let's start with updates. This is done poorly on every single Linux install I've ever, ever messed with. Uh, if I'm in here and I click updates, it's like, hey, uh, restart to install these updates. So if you look at our, our terminal over here, you can see, okay, that's everything that's being updated. If we do it from terminal, it just installs. And then if these services are running in the background, like Firewall D, I think is running, or Wire Plumber, it'll just restart them. And then you just go about your day. It's, it's pretty nice. But if I were to do it over here, there's a couple things that I've seen happen. One, I've seen these crash on updates. I've seen uh, many of these uh, actually have issues installing programs. I, I'll often find myself pulling up the terminal to install a program because of the package. Or let's say that program doesn't exist in this repository or they're, they're, you know, you go to Explorer, it just doesn't exist. Like, what the hell? 
But when I go to terminal, I can go uh, DNF install or apt install or pacman install, pick your poison, any Linux distro has a different package manager, but you can install anything from the terminal. And this is such a better experience. So I have to say, okay, so that's a, that's a pretty big thing. People need to update their systems. And this is something where the terminal just hands down wins this like 10 out of 10 where most GUI package like I think the GNOME one's one of the better ones but I've seen this fail so many times I know KDE's even worse and then you get into other desktop environments it's not nearly as polished or they may not even have a, a GUI updater so updates ah, that's kind of a bummer where else does the terminal absolutely destroy the GUI in Linux. And I would say just general usage, or let's say you have an issue with a certain device on your system. Troubleshooting that in uh, the GUI is almost impossible. Uh, a good example of this, I want to make another, uh, hey, an average user will use it. Average users will update their system. Average users will need to launch programs. <laughs> right? That's, that's kind of something we do. We launch applications. Uh, so we could click on whatever launcher you have and then type in whatever. Uh, let, let's just go ahead and close out of like Stacer here, pull up like my file explorer. And then all of a sudden something happens and it just boom. Where do you go? How do you, how do you know what happened? What, what, what was the deal with that? Like the file explorer was here one second and then it's gone the next. What do you do? What's the average user do? Well, in Linux, it's really simple. In Windows, you'd go to Event Viewer probably or or some type of logging and, and flip through that aspect of it. Or same with Mac, you, you'd go to your, your logs and take a look at what was going on with the system if it were to crash. Obviously with Mac, I think it's a little bit more stable and I don't think I've ever done that, but you get the idea. On Linux though, it happens often. And what I would do is pull up terminal and then i would type in whatever file browser i think i'm using nautilus on this machine and then well, what happens when it crashes i can go back to here and it would actually show what's happening during the launch process so in that same vein let's pull up like let's say lutris and uh see what happens when i go to launch something like oh there, there it goes it just actually crashed on me let's uh try and launch it again I think it's working now. But what happens if it just keeps crashing? And I'm like, what, what's going on with this? I could easily just come into here, pull up my terminal. Let's type Lutris. And you see what's happening in the background there. We can come over here and see what all it's doing. A lot of times when you launch from terminal, it'll actually be very ver verbose. And sometimes there's even options when you launch something to do like a dash V to be even more ver verbose or VV to be double verbose. Uh, I kid you not, that's actually an option for a lot of programs. And this actually shows you what's happening in the background in your terminal. So then you can go, okay, uh, I need to look at, you know, the message driver here. It was saying that was one of the last things that happened. Obviously, maybe, maybe I need to update my drivers if it were to crash on this portion of it. Oh, it says wine's not installed on my system to play this League of Legends. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's weird. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and try and launch it. But wine's not installed. Can I install wine through, let's say, the software browser? Let's, let's type that in. Okay. Oh no, wine's here. What version? It's a stable version. Maybe we could check a different branch. Uh, maybe we might need DXVK to go with it. Does, does it have DXVK in here? Uh, yeah, maybe I, every, everything on uh, the browser, it says, Hey, you need this certain version. Where do you get that from here? I mean, there's so many little different things that, that happen with this, uh, online browser that, you're going to need to check things. So uh, let's quit this and install wine. So if we do like a DNF install wine, what version is this wine? And then you get to see a little bit more of what's happening with it. And you can see the wine common 7.2. Oh, well, that's an old version of wine. I probably don't want that old of one. I know it's like 7.10. So I probably want like wine staging. So that's actually not what I want maybe a sudo dnf install wine staging 
Oh, well, there is no wine staging. So then let's pull up YNHQ. We'll hit downloads from their main website and then they'll click on Fedora. Okay, so this is how it's done. So we want not the development branch, but we'll, we'll do the staging branch because that's a good in between to where we can install and play a lot of games that we need. Oh, it's still not there. Okay, that's because we didn't add the repository. So let's add that real fast and then try to do that. Ah. Need super user again, <laughs> keep forgetting. And then, oh, look at that. We found our Wine HQ staging, which has, is that 7.10? 7.5, so the development version or the devil branch will probably have 7.10, but obviously this is a little bit more up to date, kind of what we want. We'll go ahead and install old Wine staging directly from their repository. I wanted to do this because there's no way I could have done this in the regular browser it's just that there's just no way to do it like on windows or any other operating system you can do that in the gui you can't do that in the gui in linux because well this is a perfect example of it i want to play league of legends and to play league of legends i kind of need these dependencies to play and if you said hey i, I can't use terminal it's needed it's absolutely needed for everything we do in this uh, operating system. And if you tell a new user, no, you don't need to use terminal. Linux is just as easy as Windows. You're lying to them and you're setting up that person to try Linux. And then in them saying, Linux sucks. It's awful. It's inconsistent. There's a whole bunch of different negatives to it. And you got to use terminal for everything. If you would have prefaced that as, hey, yeah, you just got to throw a couple lines into here in Terminal to do it, you might have a better time. But uh, chances are, if it's a complete, someone that is scared of Terminal and doesn't want to use it, Linux probably is not for them. And I just want to say this, Linux is not for everyone. And it's sure as hell, as someone that doesn't know how to pull up a Terminal, you shouldn't use it. You really should not choose anything else because this is a terrible experience for uh, an average user that's scared of terminal. You have to either be willing to learn terminal, but you definitely have to be able to pull up terminal and use it some to just get basic things like games working or other little things in here. I, I can tell a, a billion different ways. I just was kind of messing around today to try and find something, but... Uh, we, we need to start being more honest with people. And that's the thing when, when I'm in Linux, I am just, I don't care if I get a whole bunch of dislikes because someone doesn't like what I'm saying. I want to tell the truth with what's happening so we can get better. That's the thing is, you know, what are we going to wait another couple years until Linus tries Linux again? And then he tells everybody, hey, this is the real deal. And everyone else has been circle jerking everybody. And yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Linus is right. He did that. Getting back to this, I kind of want to just be brutally honest with folks and just say, hey, this all needs to be fixed. And it's not to say every single distribution. I, the only one I can think of to where I could do most of this from the GUI was OpenSUSE, which is a really obscure one. Uh, but I know they have like Yast and some GUI based editing repos to where you could add this through uh, your, your online graphic user interface, but, uh, needless to say, I, I just kind of want to make this video and say terminal is needed for Linux. And if you can't tell a user that, or they'd be like, Hey, I only need to use a web browser. Uh, well, honestly, if you just need to use a web browser, install Chrome OS, <laughs> <laughs> Unless you hate Chrome, and then, well, that's a different story altogether. Anywho, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I know this is going to be a not well liked video just because a lot of people don't want to hear this. And I don't want to tell you this, but someone has to start being honest here and say, Terminal is needed for Linux.